Would you like to know about the biggest shift in dentistry, a shift so big that it may just eclipse anything else we've learned over the last 20 years? Dr. Wilt Wilkerson, the Director of Dental Medicine at the Dawson Academy in St. Petersburg is my guest today. He is about to reveal that shift and we're starting right now. And now, Amazon number one best-selling author, Dr. Tom, the Jim's Guy Orant. Today I'm speaking with Dr. Whit Wilkerson. Whit joined Dr. Pete Dawson's private practice in 1982, where he's a partner. Dr. Wilkerson lectures worldwide on restorative dentistry, dental occlusion, TMD, airway and dental sleep medicine, and integrative dental medicine. He's an adjunct professor of graduate studies at the University of Florida's College of Dentistry and a former associate faculty at the Pankey Institute. Whit, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. How are you today? I'm doing great, Tom. It's great to hear your voice as always. Whit, I am I'm so excited about uh, what you're going to be sharing today. So not to take up any of your time, uh, I'm going to have you go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Tom. Well, I'm excited too, Tom. Um, because uh, I see some fabulous things happening in dentistry that can make us truly the leaders in the whole medical profession. And I mean that very sincerely. Um, I've been very blessed to be in practice since 1982 with uh, Dr. Pete Dawson, who we all know well and love and revere. And, and we've watched many frontiers uh, evolve over the last almost 40 years through dentistry and I know many of you will recognize those frontiers if you've lived through them as well. What I want to talk about today is as we look at the past and now to the future, where are we headed in dentistry? What is our golden opportunity? How do we continue to develop something terrific from our great profession? And so as we think about frontiers in dentistry and of course I'm thinking about Dr. Dawson and I'm thinking about his work when he started in the 1950s looks sort of like this, you know, dentures in a glass. But then over the years, we've seen so many ma amazing transformations in dental occlusion, restorative and perio and TMJ therapy and cosmetic and aesthetic dentistry and the digital age that we now find ourselves in. And I've had the opportunity to live through those watching one of the great pioneers of history, Dr. Dawson, lead the way in writing these many wonderful textbooks. And so as I've been stimulated day by day working in just a tremendous environment and culture in our practice here in St. Petersburg, uh, the question for me for a number of years has been, where are we going from here? You know, what will dentistry, if we're looking at it today, look like in four or five years from now uh, in 2025? And so with that challenge, um, I've been looking. And about eight years ago, I was invited to an amazing meeting that was hosted by a brand new group that is out of dentistry called the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health. And the meeting in 2012 was at the Cleveland Clinic. And there we heard many of the great researchers and, and really pioneers in what now is known as integrative or functional medicine. And one of those was Dr. Michael Roizen, who is the medical director of the Cleveland Clinic Wellness Institute. He gave the keynote address after we'd listened to many terrific speakers that were MDs and PhDs doing research on health and illness and disease, atherosclerosis and diabetes and Alzheimer's um, as they're trying to understand the why behind what we see happening in our culture. So so frequently, way too frequently, especially for the advanced, progressive, scientific, technological world that we live in. The speakers there were quite amazing. Um, for example, Dr. Caldwell Esselstein, who's uh, the former chief of surgery at the Cleveland Clinic, he worked closely with Dr. Roizen, who was the chief of anesthesiology at the Cleveland Clinic for many years. And both of them essentially became so frustrated because they saw an increase in atherosclerosis, an increase in patients coming in with heart disease and heart attacks and strokes, that they both both eventually essentially said, we quit. 
that we don't want to come in and put people to sleep and open up their chest and graft veins around their hearts anymore. We don't want to cut out uh, cancer from women's breasts and other parts of the body that is just so tragic and heartbreaking. Uh, and so they determined that they wanted to ask the question, why? Why are these things happening? What causes atherosclerosis? What can we do to prevent it or reverse it? And you can see from Dr. Esselstyn's book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, that they have come up with some answers. And these revolutionary, scientifically based answers that now they have enough evidence to really substantiate the truth behind it is showing some very significant and very encouraging things. We heard many speakers, and there are many books out there today, about diabetes and inflammation and, and reversing aging and uh, the fact that you can be healthy for a lifetime, which um, we've kind of accepted the fact that, that maybe that's not possible, that we see people around us becoming ill uh, at a chronic level and their, their health deteriorating. But Michael Roizen shared with us something I will never, ever forget. And what he said was, he said, we have a health care crisis that's destroying our nation. Um, we can't afford it. It's going to bankrupt us as well as bankrupting our health. And he said, there's only two options. Option one is, is that we uh, ration health care. We limit health care. We limit access to health care. We, we limit the amount of health care that's actually being utilized by raising deductibles for insurance by having pre-existing conditions that aren't covered, all these different things that can occur. And he said, we see that happening and we're in a real mess. He said, so rationing health care is one option. And he said, but I propose a better option. And that option is that we become rational. And that means that each one of us individually and as a community determine that we will take personal responsibility for our own health and we don't depend on our physician for our health, but we uh, we are going to understand how to take care of ourselves. The other thing Dr. Roizen said to this group of dentists and and, and health uh, dental hygienists and and team members was, he said, "I see dentistry on the front line, and I want to challenge you that as we see changes in understanding integrative medicine and, and more holistic approaches that." you and dentistry understand that you can be part of that. And he said, I believe dentists should be on the front lines fighting the health crisis that's destroying our nation. And when he said that, it was like a calling that I felt personally, Tom, in 2012. And I knew this was going to be the focus of the rest of my career and whatever influence I could possibly have, not only in the lives of my patients and community, but in dentistry as a whole. And so... I've developed a model that we're calling integrative dental medicine, where we're piggybacking on what these great researchers like Roizen and Esselstyn and others are engaged in. And I want to share with you what our conclusions have been on what we can do and where we can go. So uh, a tremendous article was written in 2006 in the American Journal of Public Health. And it talked about three eras of medicine. And this is where I see us in dentistry. Uh, the first era was the infectious disease model, where antibiotics and vaccines were developed, like Dr. Jonas Salk's um, vaccine for polio in 1957, and lives were saved, and, and, and the quality of life for many people was dramatically improved. But it was limited in what it could do. The second era that Dr. Breslow talked about is the reactive model, life-saving procedures, and we think about things today like heart transplants, which really have been around since 1967 uh, when Christian Barnard did the first heart transplant in South Africa. Uh, and, and this has been tremendously important where we can literally replace organs that are failing and, and, and save lives in that, in that way. And this is much of the work that Dr. Esselstyn and, and Roizen were doing at the Cleveland Clinic, but they weren't satisfied because these are just ways of of patching up diseased bodies. The third era is where it's happening, and that is what's called the root cause model. And this is where the research today is most active. The, re the uh, root cause model says, we're gonna ask why until we can't ask why anymore. Dr. Esselstyn did that with cardiovascular disease, and now 
he's come up with a tremendous amount of research showing that cardiovascular disease is primar primarily driven by uh, what we eat and that in eating a very anti-inflammatory, very helpful diet that you literally can see arteries uh, reopening and, and um, heart disease reversing and being prevented. So tremendous work by him asking why, why, why. Uh, another great uh, work has been done in type two diabetes where, for example, Dr. Joel Furman, an MD, has described in his book called The End of Diabetes, uh, that he has found in 20 plus years of work with patients and research that about 90% of patients who have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes can reverse that diabetes without medications through lifestyle changes, primarily related to nutrition and some of the other things that we'll talk about. So this is incredible work on root cause um, research. Uh, Dr. Dawson Tom wrote a book uh, about two years ago called A Better Way, and I highly recommend this to all of our colleagues, and it talked about uh, what I observed for 30 plus years and working directly beside Dr. Dawson, that he was always asking the question, is there a better way for us to practice dentistry? Has someone come up with a better technique? Has someone got a better understanding? If they do, we need to learn everything we can from them, adopt that, and implement it into our practice. And so that's the root cause model approach as we see it. A friend of mine from Philadelphia, an MD named Dr. Chip Whitney, describes the third era of medicine this way. It's about empowering another person to create personal health. Health isn't just the absence of disease, but rather a state of vitality where we have the energy, motivation, excitement, and hope of youth. What if we could be part of that in dentistry? Wouldn't that be so exciting? Well. I propose that we can, and we have a lot, a lot of why questions to ask, don't we, Tom? For example, in dentistry today, malocclusions, why do malocclusions occur? Not just how do we correct a malocclusion, but how did it begin in the first place? And why do people brux? A question that we've been asking for years and years and have had a very difficult time answering. Sure, we try to correct uh, worn down occlusions and we put splints in to try to prevent them from damaging our restorative work but we mainly have not answered the question why does it occur in the first place what about tmd uh, issues and joint breakdown and sore muscles and headaches etc why do these things occur and what about disordered breathing and, and breathing disordered sleep that we're hearing so much about today starting with little infants very often that are having severe problems. Why do these things occur? That's where the future is for us. And so Dr. Royzen shared with us something that was very, very important asking, uh, answering the why question. And that was, he said, which is more important for health versus illness? Is it primarily genetic? Is it primarily hereditary? The reasons why we get sick? with these chronic diseases, or is it more related to lifestyle? Is lifestyle a significant factor? And in answering that question, he quoted much research talking about what we know today from what's going on within each cell in the body, no matter where that cell is located, that we're now finding that there are a million of DNA switches called regulatory DNA that strongly dictate how, when, and where in the body different genes are turned on and off. They're active as promoters and enhancers and silencers and insulators. And the actual genes of expression make up only about 2% of the human genome. These regulatory DNA, these on-off switches control those genes that are encrypted within the remaining 98% of the genome. And without these switches, the genes of expression are relatively passive or in inert. So if you think of switches that are controlling our health uh, within each cell, here's the key lesson. The switches are largely controlled by lifestyle influences. And so we call this epigenetics or the environmental influence on gene expression and cell expression and development. And so epigenetics is a big topic now in research and going forward and trying to understand disease and health. And it's something that we can be involved in in dentistry. In the Mayo Clinic Health 
newsletter, um, there was a, uh, a very interesting article talking about chronic disease and why different chronic diseases occur. And in this newsletter uh, by Dr. Brent Bauer, it, it, the title was Buzzed on Inflammation. Inflammation is the new medical buzzword, he stated. It seems as though everyone is talking about inflammation, especially the fact that inflammation appears to play a role in many chronic diseases. Now, in dentistry, we're very familiar with inflammation, aren't we? Because we look at inflammation every single day, all day long, as we look at periodontal health and periodontal inflammation. And as we now begin to think deeper and asking more why questions regarding our patients, not only oral health and periodontal health, but also at their whole health, we realize that there's a connection between inflammation in the mouth and inflammation elsewhere. And that inflammation in the mouth may be a reflection of whole body inflammation. And there are a number of drivers behind not only periodontal inflammation, but also whole body inflammation. So we think of things like sugar and diabetes and elevated blood sugar levels and insulin resistance and how that is a very significant part of inflammation systemically. Diabetes has been compared to having shards of glass scraping the walls of your arteries all day long. So there's really hardly anything that could be worse than to have uncontrolled high blood sugar levels and insulin resistance to not only whole health, uh, but also local health. And we know that periodontal disease and diabetes have a very strong relationship to each other and it's something that we in dentistry should be thinking about with each and every patient that we see. What about nutrition or diet or food? Can food be inflammatory? Well, of course. And uh, in studies that have been shown, showing us that about 60% of the standard American diet, or we'll call that a SAD diet, is pro-inflammatory when we see refined carbs, refined sugars, we refined uh, uh, oils that are in our diet and represent about 60% of our calories and are very pro-inflammatory in nature, that's a big deal. And we know that can be a big deal to our periodontal health and inflammation as well. Um, smoking and toxins obviously are very pro-inflammatory. Who's the patient that you don't want to put an implant in their mouth? It's the smoker because we know that the healing and integration of the implant is poor. We know circulation is poor. We know that the bone quality is poor because of this factor. Um, also, stress is a big, a big issue in our society, and it's a big issue to inflammation. Stress increases the release of stress hormones, cortisol, epinephrine, and with the chronic release of stress hormones, we see lots of inflammation. Also, lack of physical act in activity is a major issue of inflammation. So physical inactivity, which is very prevalent in our society, starting with young children, is a major source of inflammation. And some researchers would say that physical inactivity may be worse than smoking for your overall health and inflammation state. Sleep is a major part of health, and it's also a major consideration for inflammation for the person who sleeps poorly, such as the one who has sleep apnea or upper airway resistance syndrome where they're struggling through the night and they're moving from light sleep to deeper to deep sleep, but then they're quickly uh, being alarmed and woken up and um, having uh, changes in the cycles of sleep can be a major factor of overall body inflammation. We see inflammation all around us and patients complaining of sore muscles and sore joints and osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome is something that we see all around us and the patients that we see in as a reflection of systemic inflammation. An outstanding book that I wanna highly recommend to everyone listening is called Beat the Heart Attack Gene by Dr. Brad Bale and Dr. Amy Doneen. Um, they become very involved in speaking to dental groups and very strongly believe that inflammation is the key to atherosclerosis and heart attacks and that oral health and oral inflammation and oral pathogens getting into the bloodstream, both from periodontal and periapical disease, 
is a major consideration in overall risk factors for systemic inflammation for heart attacks, strokes, and atherosclerosis. So uh, systemic inflammation is the number one factor, according to Bale and Donine, in atherosclerosis and accelerated aging. Um, I want to Do share it. with you an illustration. Yes, yeah. yeah. Tom. Just be before you go on, I just a couple couple quick comments. First of all, the last slide that you did where you showed uh, all the different things that are contributing to inflammation, I'm looking at that slide saying to myself, this is this is a revolutionary change in looking at, as you said, what are the reasons that these things are happening as opposed to just treating symptoms. Uh, I also wanted to point out, you, you have mentioned so many terrific books. What I'm going to do for the viewer, I'm going to put a link and a, and a name of every one of the books that you've talked about so far. I'll put those in the description below so that if you would like to um, you know, pick up any of these books, go ahead to the description below and you can find them that way. Thank you so much. Great. Oh, that's great, Tom. Thank you. Well, Bale and Donine's book, Beat the Heart Attack Gene, is a great place to start because they understand that many physicians aren't being thorough or don't understand factors of inflammation and how that can affect heart health and, and all organ health. And so what this book is about, it's written for everybody to read and to understand the role of inflammation and even how they should be individually tested when they go to see their physician. So through their work, you have patients now showing up at their physician's office saying, now when you're looking at my whole health and doing blood work, I hope that you'll be also doing a myeloperoxidase because I know that's important too. <laughs> and I love that because we're educating ourselves to take control of our own health and even to be an influence for those that might be our health care providers, which I think at this point is very appropriate. Um, so I want to share with you an illustration of, of exactly what we're talking about here, and I hope you'll never forget this. This is a pic pictures of several of my mem my family members. On the upper left with the sunglasses on is my mom. Her name is Dottie. And then our daughter Whitney and our granddaughter Carolina and my wife Pat. And and you see pictures of my sister and brother-in-law and, and one of our sons. But I want to talk to you about Dottie because Dottie was born in a rural North Carolina in a little town called Burgaw. Burgaw is near Wilmington. The county has 2,000 people in it. If you visited anybody's home in Burgon, North Carolina, and they had a large backyard, it's very likely they would be growing tobacco just to make a little extra money. And I wouldn't be surprised if they smoked or chewed some of it as well. So my mom was raised in a family that I want to describe to you as far as her background. Her mother was obese. And I'll just illustrate her here with this cartoon. But my grandmother weighed about 300 pounds and her nickname that we all called her affectionately was Big Mama. She had a sister who looked like her twin and her name was Candy Mama. But these two sisters also had four other sisters, all of whom weighed at least 250 pounds. So my mom came from a background of obesity a very strong background of obesity. These women all had poor diets. None of them exercised at all. They had poor dental home care. In fact, most all of them were wearing full dentures by the time they were in their 30s or 40s. So they had periodontal disease. Today, we would know that they struggled from metabolic syndrome where their weight increased, their blood sugar increased, their insulin resistance increased, their their uh, cholesterol increased, and with that change came not only pre-diabetes, but eventually type 2 diabetes, which pretty much did them in. Um, they died from heart attacks and strokes and diabetes complications prematurely, all primarily in their 50s. So with that background, you would say my mom's chances of living a long life are pretty poor. And in fact, my mom was one of seven children, and five of them were very much like her aunt and mother. And they too had complications from diabetes, obesity, uh, strokes, heart attacks, and early death. So when you look at my mom from the standpoint of, if genetics is what drives the engine here of disease, 
if hereditary issues are super strong and are what are going to be the black cloud hanging over our head, I would have to say she's in big trouble. And so at a young age, uh, my mom decided that if it was at all possible, she wasn't going to end up like that. And so she began looking into different options. And I remember as a young boy, her going to the health food store, taking handfuls of vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D uh, supplements, um, uh, juicing carrots, juicing celery and drinking uh, that every day. Um, she has always been someone who's been very physically active, either bicycling or jogging. Uh, she, uh, her whole lifetime has been a scratch, excellent, excellent championship golfer. And I'll show you her swing in a minute. She's had excellent oral health. She has one three unit bridge and no other dentistry that's ever been done uh, to this day uh, for caries or periodontal disease. Um, she has a very strong faith, a uh, very uh, strong belief in higher power and and, and the Lord guiding her life. She's an excellent sleeper. I want to show you her golf swing. And this is recent within the last year or two. Um, so take a look at her uh, swing. And you can see she's very fit, trim, healthy, uh, uh, has great mobility. And I want you to guess her age. And Tom, you won't believe this, but my mom is 97 years young, and um, wait, 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 I got, I got it. I, I got to tell you that I'm, I'm watching this, and my father was a golfer, and I'm watching this, and you said she's a scratch golfer. She looks because of the hat, you can't see her face. She looks like she could be in her 20s or 30s. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing, and. So is this genes or lifestyle? Obviously, lifestyle choices. Tom, I remember as a young boy, if we would get a cold, my mom would go to the medicine cabinet and get a syringe and vial with B12, and we would get B12 shots in the bottom in 1960. And so this has been truly her lifestyle. And what we would say is it's not only a lifestyle of great nutrition, not allowing herself to gain weight, um, great, strong, positive attitude, uh, but it's overall what we would call an anti-inflammatory lifestyle in every component. And so this is what I'm talking about, and this is something that we can get involved in in dentistry. So Pete Dawson has taught us, hasn't he, as you and I have learned, Tom, and many others that are listening, that dentists are the physicians of the masticatory system. We have a responsibility for the whole masticatory system, joints, muscles, occlusion, periodontal support. These are the things that we have focused on in our careers to be just experts and masters at helping people. But now we're adding the beyond component. I've had many, many hours of wonderful conversations with Pete, who has been totally supportive and seeing that this is where we need to go next. So my challenge to everyone listening is to understand that we have an opportunity to be pioneering dental teams that are focused on complete health, which we're calling integrative dental medicine. And what does that look like is, next, is the next frontier in dentistry. What I've tried to do over the last eight years of studying this exhaustively is to boil it down to the least common denominator that we can and then really try to develop those fully. And so the three pillars of integrative dental medicine are TMD and occlusion, which I see as a dental specialty and something that we are uniquely responsible for in all of medicine. But beyond that, inflammation and infection is something that we really can become very, very involved in as dental teams. And also airway and breathing, which is getting a lot of attention today but very appropriately, a lot of attention as related to dentistry. I've written a book just recently, Tom, entitled The Shift, meaning a paradigm shift. And it's about the dramatic movement toward health center dentistry. And so um, the topic of it is divided up into these three different subjects that we want to really dive into and understand everything that we possibly can about this. And here's the key point. And that's this, and here's Pete with 
me and, and Shanley Lestini, who was my co-writer of this book, and he's been very, very excited about what we've done. But here's what I want us to understand is that TMD and occlusion relate to inflammation and it relates to airway and breathing. And so as we look at TMD and occlusion, we want to understand that as well as understanding internal derangements of the joint and how the joints, muscles, and occlusions work together and forming a dynamic system. Um, Pete's book is the Bible on this subject, but we're trying to take this now even to the next level as we move forward in dentistry. The other thing uh, related to airway and breathing is that we understand that airway and breathing has a dynamic effect on occlusion. Uh, whether we're breathing through our nose or our mouth makes a big difference. Tongue position is a big deal. Uh, allergies and these sorts of things are very important. The development of the craniofacial conflict, uh, complex is directly related to airway and breathing factors. And so that becomes a pillar of dentistry as we look at dentistry as an integrative discipline. And then the thir third subject of inflammation and infection. And I mentioned that Bale and Donina have addressed this in their book, but periodontal pathogens getting into the bloodstream, periapical pathogens getting into the bloodstream is a big deal for inflammation throughout the body. Um, and so we want to look at that. Nutrition is a big deal. Blood sugar levels is a big deal for periodontal health and, and oral health and saving our teeth for a lifetime. So we want to see how these things work together and build a model around that as something that can really, really be dynamic and, and bring dentistry to a level that we never dreamed it could be. So in the book, what I've done, Tom, is developed a checklist because I find that checklists are always a way to be more thorough, comprehensive and detailed and make sure that we don't overlook important things. And so you can see on the checklist here as we on the top, let's see three vertical columns, one inflammation and infection, second airway breathing disorders and third TMD and occlusion. What we've done is we go down the list and we see history, signs, and symptoms. And what I'm encouraging all of us to do is to have a checklist where we can go through and look at eight or 10 general things that could be true for anyone who has a issue with infection or inflammation, an issue with airway or breathing, an issue with TMD or occlusion. That's all background information. Then when the patient comes into the office, we'll look at four or five things that could be key signs as we clinically evaluate our patients of one of these three or all of these three things. And then screening and testing, what can we do today to go deeper in understanding whether there's a real problem there in any one of these three categories? And our conclusion being whether there's something positive that we need to address. And then the second half of the checklist is actually a guideline for treatment options. And so you can see here under each one of these categories, uh, we have treatment options in a general way that are described uh, that will help us to know where to go. Some of these things we can do in our office. Some of these things we're doing in collaboration with other medical specialists that we're working very closely with today, such as allergists and ENTs and, and sleep physicians and cardiologists. Um, just tremendous work that we're able to do uh, back and forth with these different specialties in, in medicine that are recognizing the need for this uh, to be addressed. So, Tom, my, my point in this is that I see these three things as linked and I see them strongly linked to comprehensive dentistry as we move forward. And so I just would ask each person listening to consider how you could build a practice that not only is building healthier patients, but also a healthier practice through addressing these things. So we can get you started by just, um, you know, reading the book, The Shift, which is really an overview. It's the first time we've addressed these things um, thoroughly, and it talks about much of the research behind uh, what we're looking into here and, and looking forward to. Um, also, Tom, I think we're going to have a couple other conversations together uh, where we'll dig in a little deeper on airway and breathing disorders and also TMJ and occlusion. With, um, with your permission, I'd like to make available in the uh, description below so that the viewers can see both of those checklists, if that's okay with you. 
Absolutely, Tom. And um, I can provide the checklist for you and and uh, we'll share that with everybody. I, I would love for them to have that and use it. That would be wonderful. So uh, you can look again, uh, when you're watching this video, you can look in the description below for all of the books, including The Shift by Dr. Wilkerson. Uh, with this is, uh, it, it's an overused word, but life-changing really applies here. So, so I'm gonna use that this is really life-changing information. One thing that, that we've never talked about um, that, that we should have a discussion about someday. Um, about probably 10 years ago, um, I was really involved in changing the way that I eat. I've always been very physically active, um, but change the way that I eat. And then within the last five years, additional changes. Um, and you had put one slide up there. One of the uh, books was uh, Living 10 Years Younger. Um, and um, there are many who have... And there are many who have followed who talk about the fact that we have control between lifestyle, um, our diet, and our physical activity, and add to that, of course, sleep uh, and reduced inflammation. We have the ability to live maybe even 15 or more years physiologically below our chronologic ages. So uh, kudos for everything you're doing here, and I'm very much looking forward to our next conversation and the next video. Great, Tom. Um, thanks. Thank you so much. Take care. You too, Tom. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you won't miss a thing. If you're not yet a GEMS family member, Elizabeth and I would be delighted to help you build your practice. We'd love to have you here with us on Planet GEMS. For a time-limited offer, a free test drive of GEMS membership, go to dentalgoldmine.com. You'll find a link in the description below. If this was helpful, please click like, and I'd really appreciate if you could share this with other dentists. Thanks so much for joining Dr. Wilkerson and me here in the Dental Goldmine, and remember, you're only one gem away.